Let's move on to item number 31. What is the probability of not getting a face card in a standard deck of cards? Is it 1 13th, 3 13th, 10 13th, or 12 13th? When we speak about face cards, these are cards that are not jacks, not kings, or not queens. In a standard deck of cards, there are 52 cards. Of course, that's excluding the jokers. But you have three kings. Uh, three, uh, you have four kings, four queens, and four jacks. So that's 12 of them. So there are 52 minus 12, which means that there are 40 cards that are not face cards out of the 52. Hence, you have 40 over 52, which simplifies to 10 thirteenths because you divide them both by the GCF, which is four. If you answered C, correct. 31. That's for 31, rather. Let's have 32. The lines 3x minus 4y equals 5 and 5x minus by equals 1 are perpendicular to each other. What is B? Which of these fractions is correct? A, B, C, or D? For this one, you have to see, you have to note, that if you're going to express them both in their slope intercept forms with the intention of determining their slopes. So we will solve for y. So isolating the three x, uh, the negative the y's here, we have negative four y equals negative three x plus five. Dividing both sides or each term by negative four, you have y is equal to three fourths of x minus five fourths. So your slope here is three fourths because this is your slope intercept form and, uh, and the coefficient of X is your slope. So your slope here is three fourths. Using a similar reasoning to the second equation, you will have five X minus B Y equals one. You subtract both sides by five X. You have negative B Y equals negative five X plus one and dividing both sides by negative b to solve for y, we have y is equal to five over b x minus one over b. And we have to remember this, that the slope of this one now is five over b, and that if you have two lines that are, that are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes should be negative one. So in this case, we have 3 fourths times 5 over B equals negative 1. Multiplying the two fractions, we have 15 all over 4B equals negative 4. And multiplying both sides by negative 4B, I have 15 equals negative 4B. Dividing both sides by negative 4, you have negative 15 fourths equals B, which is letter D. If you could see the steps here are quite longer, but if you are just good enough, you could make it as short as possible. 33. My age two years from now is four thirds my age six years ago. How old am I now? Am I 30, 32, 33, or 35? If X is my age now, then my age two years from now will be x plus two. My age six years ago will be x minus six. But my age two years from now is four thirds of my age six years ago. That's why I have the equation x plus two equals four thirds the product, I mean four thirds of the difference of x minus six. What I did next was I multiplied both sides by 3 to clear off fractions. That's why I have 3 times the quantity x plus 2 equals 4 times the quantity x minus 6. Using the distributive property both sides, we have 3x plus 6 equals 4x minus 24. Subtracting both sides by 3x, that's why the 3x here became minus 3x on the right. 
and adding both sides 24. So this minus 24 will become plus 24 here. I have 6 plus 24 equals 4x minus 3x, which simplifies to 30 equals x. Hence, I am 30 years old now. Letter A is the correct answer. 34. A certain group of friends can be arranged in 720 ways around a circular table. How many are they? Are they 10, 9, 8, or 7? So this one involves circular permutation. And the formula for circular permutation is n minus 1 quantity factorial. But the value of this number is 720. And our goal is to solve for n, which is the number of people. We know that 720 is equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or simply 6 factorial. And since both of them are factorials and they are equal, it follows that n minus 1 is equal to 6. Adding both sides by 1 gives n equals 7. Hence, there are seven people involved or are sitting around the chair, around the table rather, D. 35. A square has an area of 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 square units. What is its perimeter? A, B, C, or D? From here, we know that the formula for area of a square is S squared. And that's equal to 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. If you're, if you're keen enough, you could actually realize that the right-hand side is in fact the square of 2x plus 1. And to determine the value of S, we will take the principal square of both sides. We'll just get the positive value. So S has to be... 2x plus 1. Now, from here, I will get the perimeter by using the formula 4 times s. And your s is 2x plus 1. So 4 times 2x plus 1, by the distributive property, you will have 8x plus 4 units. D is the correct answer. Okay. Next number. What is the nature of the roots of 3x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0? Are they real, rational, equal? Real, rational, unequal? Real, irrational, unequal? Or are they imaginary conjugates? So to aid us in this, we may actually compute for the roots or we could actually utilize the concept of what we call discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. b squared, the discriminant is in fact the expression under the radical sign. Okay? And our a here is 3, our b is negative 2, and our c is 4 equal. Take note, huh? to determine A, B, and C, it should be written in standard form like this. So by substitution, that's negative 2 quantity squared minus 4 times 3 times 4. The square of negative 2 is 4. 4 times 3 times 4 is 48. So you have 4 minus 48, which is negative 44. From here, a value a negative value of a discriminant indicates that the roots are not real. Hence, without even computing for the roots, I'm sure that you will have imaginary conjugates. And that is letter D. I hope you got it. 37. What is the range of the function f of x equals the negative square root of the quantity x minus 4 plus 3. Is it y greater than 3, y less than negative uh, 3, y greater than or equal to 3, or y less than or equal to 3? 
Let's see. If you are just keen enough, the value of this expression here could be zero. That's why could it could be zero. And therefore, if you have zero plus three, you will have three. So three is one of the values that are in the range of this function. So I'm sure that A and B are incorrect. However, if you have a negative sign here, then the square root function like uh, goes on or stretches going downward. But if it is positive here, it's like going upward. That's why if you see the graph here, this is now the graph of f of x equals negative the square root of x minus four plus three. And you could see that three here is the largest uh, rate, uh, value in the range and everything else is less than it. Hence, we could see that the range here is y is less than or equal to three letter D. Let's, let's move on. So that's D. Let's move on to item number 38. What is the domain of the function f of x equals x minus one all over x cubed plus one? Is it A, B, C, or D? So for the domain of this, this function has, could has the tendency to be undefined if your denominator is equal to zero. Hence, I will be equating the denominator, which is x cubed plus one to zero. You could actually see that this expression is factorable as x plus one times a quantity x squared minus x plus one. You could actually verify that or you have to review how to factor a sum of two uh, cubes. So the first factor x plus one could be zero. So if x plus one is equal to zero, then x is equal to negative one. And let's have the second equation, x squared minus x plus one. We can see that if we will compute for the discriminant of this uh, using the formula b squared minus four ac. So your a is one, b is negative one and your c is one. You have the square of negative one minus four times one times one, which is negative three with simplified. And since it's, it's negative, so I'm sure that, uh, that x squared minus x plus 1 does not have a real root. But for the domain, we are talking only about real roots. So negative 1 could make the denominator 0. And since negative 1 could make the denominator 0, hence it should not be part of the domain of f of x. Hence. The domain here is a set of all x not equal to negative one. Letter D. I hope you got the explanation clearly, friends. 39. What polynomial function has a slope of x squared minus four and that two, three is a point on its graph? Did you go for A? for B, for C, or for D. Remember that slope is the first derivative of your function. So therefore, we could represent M as a derivative or dy over dx equals x squared minus four. Multiplying both sides by d of x, we have d of dy equals x squared minus four times dx. And then in integrating both sides now, if you integrate dy, that will be y. And using the power rules for integration, x uh, you add one to the exponent, and whatever the exponent is, that will be the denominator. So x raised to 2 plus 1, 3. So 3 is the exponent. 3 is also the denominator here, minus the integration of 4 of negative four, which is negative four X. But remember, we still need to attach plus C because we are having indefinite integrals here. 
Um, but for now, it's the problem states that 2, 3 is a point. So 2 here is the x, 3 here is the y. We will substitute it here to determine the value of c. So with such, you have 3 is equal to 2 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 2 plus c. So this is now 3 equals 2 cubed is 8. That becomes 8 thirds minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus C. To clear off fractions, I multiplied both sides by 3. That's why three, uh, we have the equation 9 is equal to 8 minus 24 plus 3C. And doing the algebra now and simplifying, you will get the value of 3C to be equal to 25. And we're dividing both sides by 3 to get C. So we have 25, 25 thirds, which is the value of C. Letter, um, but we are not yet done. We have to substitute, by, by the way, the value of C into this equation. Hence, you have Y is equal to X cubed over 3 minus 4X plus 25 thirds. Letter A. Number 40. Evaluate the integration of 3x squared dx as x goes from 1 to 2. Did you answer 7, 8, 9, or 10? So this time, this is now a definite integral, and we could use the concept of the power rule now. From here, so I'll copy the expression. I will add the 1 to the exponent. So 2 plus 1, 3. But it should also be your denominator. So you have 3x cubed over 3. But if I could divide the 3, it becomes x cubed only. As it will be evaluated from 1 to 2. That's why you have x cubed evaluated from 1 to 2 here. And so by a certain theorems in calculus, what we will do is substitute the 2 to the x cubed. I will also substitute the 1 to the x cubed and subtract the results. Hence, I have 2 cubed minus 1 cubed, which is 8 minus 1 or 7. If you answered A, great job. 